pass to Jerry. All right, you may be seated. All right, good morning. Welcome to the Jefferson District Court. This is Division 102, and I'm Judge Stephanie Burke. Um, I'm first going to call the roll to make sure that we have the individuals that we believe we have on our panel. Um, if you will please just say here when I call your name, and I apologize in advance if I butcher your name. swear you in as prospective jurors. If you will all please rise. I'm going to administer an oath and the appropriate response will be I do. If you will all please raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm that you will give the true and correct answers to all of the questions that will be asked by both the court and the attorneys uh, for the respective parties with regard to your qualifications as jurors in the case of the Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Jeffrey Edwards. All right, please be seated. All right, so I am going to ask you some preliminary questions today, and then I will turn over the questioning to the attorneys for the parties. And some of these questions may seem uh, somewhat um, simple, but they are very important. Uh, first, I'm going to have to ask, is everyone here a citizen of the United States? Yes. Is there anyone who is not? All right. Is there anyone that is not a resident of Jefferson County, Kentucky? All right. Is there any person on the panel who is not 18 years of age? And this case should be completed today. So is there any person uh, who's, who would be excused at some point today um, by the jury pool, or who was asked to be excused at some point today? All right. How can you be excused? You ask the question, how can you be excused? Just a preliminary question. If you're sick or if you, is well, that what you mean by being excused? Well, if you've already been excused, have you already asked in advance to be excused for part of the day? Okay. So if anyone has not done that. All right. Does any member of the panel have any medical reason or other reason why you believe that you could not sit throughout the day um, as a juror on this panel? Now, in, uh, obviously, I will give breaks throughout the day. We will take breaks. There will be natural breaks in the proceedings. Um, if anyone has, needs a break at any time, please raise your hand. Um, and obviously, the court will address you. Uh, so you have been summoned here today to serve as jurors in an action titled the Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Jeffrey Edwards wherein the defendant has been charged with operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol first offense. 
and he has entered a plea of not guilty, and that has raised issues of fact to be determined by a jury. The questions that are going to be asked of you today are intended to, not, to ensure that Mr. Edwards receives a fair trial. They are not meant to embarrass anyone, and even though some of these questions may be sensitive or uncomfortable, it is very important that you answer fully and truthfully. It is important that he be treated by an impartial and fair jury, and so we need to assess your ability to be fair and impartial. So I will, um, like I have asked you questions, each party is going to have the opportunity to ask you questions, and then I may ask you more questions at the end. One of the things that will happen is if there is a question that is asked of you that you do not want to share the answer with all of these strangers that you're sitting among, then you can ask to approach. And I will bring you up here and the attorneys will come up here and we can speak um, up here at the bench and outside the hearing of everyone else. Sometimes that happens. It happens in almost every single trial. So please just tell us if you would like to approach. All right, that's perfectly acceptable. And I'm going to now turn this over to the panel. Thank you, Good morning, everybody. Uh, by show of hands here, who here can be fair? Okay. Who here can tell the truth? Okay. That's a great start, but uh, that's not why we're here today, okay? I think most people can be fair, they can be honest. However, uh, we are all people. We all have unique life experiences, beliefs, maybe things that have happened to us, things that have happened to a family member, maybe, that affect our ability to hear evidence and to look at a case. And so the purpose of these questions is essentially to identify some of those things. So I'm going to talk to you about different aspects of the case, different things that might come up. And your honest answers are appreciated. There's no wrong answers here, just honest answers. So uh, your participation and your honesty is greatly appreciated. And please bear with me because this is my first time doing this, okay? And so, first of all, this is Matthew Johnston. He is an assistant <laughs> county attorney. So, yes. is there anyone that knows Mr. Johnson personally? Mr. Johnson is um, assisted by attorney Jim Higgins, who is also an assistant county attorney. Is there anyone who knows Mr. Higgins? All right, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, so, to introduce myself and Mr. Higgins, we're both assistant we work for Mike O'Connell's office. He's the elected county attorney. Some of you may have heard of Mr. O'Connell being a public figure, you may see his name or something like that. Does anybody here have any strong public opinions about Mr. O'Connell or maybe know him personally? That was like your very first um, Also in the courtroom is Officer Michael Purcell, who works with Helen Beatty. Uh, he's one of the witnesses on this case. Does anybody here know or have an interaction with Officer Uh, we do have one other witness. She's not in the courtroom right now, but her name is Officer Tina Payne. She is a corrections officer at Louisville Metro Corrections. Does anybody know Officer Payne? So, I want to talk a little bit first about jury duty. Okay, that's why I call you guys up here today. Um, who here by Cheryl Jones has had jury duty before today? Okay, several of you. And out of, out of all those people, um, who here has actually ended up sitting on a jury during a trial? Okay, several of you. Um, I'm just going to go one by one, if that's okay, by row. Um, and I'm just going to ask you, um, so I saw you raise your hand, sorry. Uh, was the case that you were a juror on, was it a criminal or a civil case? Okay. And what was the defendant charged with in this case? Conspiracy. Were you guys, did you guys reach a verdict on the case? And what was your verdict? Not on the conspiracy to murder, it was guilty on conspiracy to take the case. 
criminal or civil case? Civil case. Okay. Do you remember what the issue was or what the case was about? What you said? Injury. Okay. And so, uh, so I guess somebody was suing the drunk driver for money. Okay. Did you guys reach a verdict on that case? And what was your verdict?
officer I had moved from Indiana to Kentucky and my license came up as being suspended and it wasn't. It was on a weekend I was taken to jail. I was strip searched three times. It was a traumatic experience. And We only ran how to do it is to turn the sound off. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be recorded. It sounds like everyone's already heard, so the bad parts about it, so it really doesn't matter now. Do you think that you would be able to? Long story short, I'm still bitter, and uh, it, I met several police officers from the time I exited the car and the whole weekend in there because there wasn't any judges on my duty, no police officers in the general. I was put in with criminals, people who were talking about sad, that sad here? new people. Yes. yes. And uh, I was pulled over for speeding, but they changed the speed limit, and I didn't even get charged with, with speeding. So all of it unnecessary for a traffic violation, which, you know, I endure. So most likely, I probably won't. I will still be better to, to the day I die. I will live in I understand. I appreciate your honesty. Is there any questions? witnesses, of course, uh, testimony that doesn't necessarily imply believe, at least my understanding of the words, but it just to expand on that little definition a little. Yeah, so, so really what I'm asking is, so obviously police officers are people, they can be good officers, they're bad officers, um, I'm certainly not saying you should believe everything that comes from a police officer simply because you're a police officer, but at the same time, I also want to know from you guys, if maybe because of something that either happened to you, or maybe something that heard about it from your family member or just something in the news you've seen that would affect your ability to trust this officer. But again, you're stating the word trust, like we should trust anybody that speaks. Um, I guess for me it would be fairly listening to their side of the story would maybe be like what you're asking. Yeah, that, that's a fair way to put it. Uh, would you have trouble fairly listening? listening? Anybody else who had any sort of interaction with law 
enforcement or something uh, that you've heard about, seen from your family member that might affect your ability to fairly evaluate and make informed options as you make? I'm going to move on. Is there anybody here who has any specialized legal knowledge? So what I mean by that is, um, is anybody here an attorney? Is anybody here maybe worked in a law firm, a paralegal, or maybe your spouse or somebody you're very close to is an attorney? Is anybody that applied to anybody here? Yes. A wife or a attorney. Okay. Do you know what area, or like what area of law she practices in? No. So I want to get into sort of more of the statistics of this case. As the, as the judge stated earlier, this is a DUI case. The defendant, Mr. Edwards, is charged with DUI. Uh, as we'll get into later in the trial, there's essentially just two elements of DUI. The first element is operation or physical control of a motor vehicle. I think we all know there are what that means. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that. But the second element so I, I want to start. Does anybody here have an idea of what impairment means? Ability to operate. Or hinderly, okay. Okay. Does anybody agree, disagree, or stand on it? To operate safely, okay. So it's not just operate, but operate in a way that doesn't. Anybody have other thoughts of just what impairment means? Is impairment different from intoxication? Anybody have a thought on that? I see several nods. Does anybody want to? Maybe somebody here has talked yet. Somebody here. Thank you. 
in your hand and gave that person a breath of life. Well, how do you know they're drunk? here who feels um, maybe it's like a religious thing maybe it's because you have I don't know, but does anybody here feel that you cannot sit in judgment of another person like, is there anybody who feels like I, I just don't like the thought of somebody's faith being in my hands yeah. back on to somebody, whether it be a family member or a close friend, maybe even yourself, that was charged with a DUI. Okay, several people. Uh, I'm going to go over by the so I'm sorry. Who, uh, who was it? I don't know which is worse. Oh. <laughs> That's really bad. It might make the other people no, crazy. That's it. terrible. It <laughs> it's no, really it's bad. <laughs> okay. And you're number two? Okay. Um, I was charged with the DUI. I think it was in 05. It actually went, went amended down to one endangerment. It was expunged in 2011. So I'm, I'm not even sure of the dates. Mm -hmm. And is there anything about that experience that would preclude yeah, you so. from sitting and so. being impartial? Or... Cop was just doing his job. Okay. Any questions, Jim? Uh, do you feel like you were? Do you feel like you were treated fairly throughout at the, the time judicial I didn't. process? At the time, I oh, the judicial process, yes. Okay. At the time, I didn't think I was, but okay. I got over it. Gotcha. <laughs> time heals all wounds. Hmm? I said time heals all wounds. <laughs> Did you say, well, it provides, it provides perspective, anyway. Sure. Mm -hmm. Did you say you, you pled to the charge, or was it, was it a trial? It didn't go to a trial, no. Okay, so but I, I got an attorney, and, okay. and they hashed it out. Okay. And you ended up pleading to the amended charge of the one endangerment. One endangerment. I only blew a .06, so I thought that that was a little excessive at the time. But, again, in hindsight, the cop was just doing his duty. Anything else? We have no more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I understand that is really awful. <laughs> so, um, apologize for how loud that is.
Mm -hmm. <coughs> One sec. I couldn't hear. I got some. I couldn't hear what she said. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what she said. To the contrary, I, we want to make your life easier. So this is a um, operating motor vehicle under the influence case. And Mr. Edwards has been charged with that. That is the sole charge. Based on your past experiences, it is my personal opinion, not even as an attorney, just as a human being, I don't think this would be the right case for you. I don't either. Yeah. Well, I didn't hear what your response was. My first husband is a drunk. I have his name, address, and social security number, and we'll be glad to give it to that officer because he still drinks and drives to this day, I guarantee it. He's on drugs, he's an alcoholic, he's abusive, and he used to drive my kid around after we split up with that it completely intoxicated. I guarantee he still does it. But my kid's an adult now. But I try to put this aside, but it, re recent things have come up where I'm thinking about Even though I haven't been married to mm -hmm. him for 20 years, mm -hmm. A lot of things have come back. Like mm -hmm. somebody I know at work got something happened to her from her husband, mm -hmm. and it just triggered things. And this has been recent where I'm starting to get memories back that I have like let go. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. honestly, this is probably not the case for me. <laughs> <laughs> is there, um, I guess, when you're hearing that evidence in this case, would you, would you? 
bring, would you discredit something? Well, let me rephrase that. Do you think anything that happened to you, the fucking situation with your husband and all the past experiences you've shared with us, does that affect how much you believe the evidence in this case? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. If you say there's not a breathalyzer, I think there probably should have been one. But on the other hand, I mean, how many times have I seen him act after just like one drink, act like a totally different person? So that's just my own personal experience with somebody that does drink on a daily basis. So. Okay. In that experience, based on that experience, do you think you can be fair and impartial to another individual? I mean, I can try think you can be though because it's one thing to be able to be able to try I'm not sure honestly would you have difficulty with that I think, think that I would have difficulty even probably even hearing about it to tell you the truth just based on a lot of things happened back then can I see your badge please thank you thank you do I just go back yeah thank you thank you thank you Honestly, I just want to release her so that she doesn't have to sit here for the rest of the evening while I'm here. We, we would move to strike her for cross. She's number 19, I believe, Your Honor. Okay. Um, no, 19 no, is 19. 19. 16. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 16. 16, 16. 16 that is correct. Um, well, we don't, I don't excuse them until mm -hmm. we... Okay. Oh, that's fair. I'm about to wrap up anyway, so I'm not going to... Well, well, we still have our way yeah. here, but okay. Th I understand, Your Honor, but... But you're making a motion We're making a motion for cause. Do you have any objection? Um, I don't have mistake won't do it again is there anything about your experience that would keep the you only, from being case able? Is be different of course mm -hmm. so i've heard any facts mm -hmm. um, i did not take a breath closet mm -hmm. uh, i refused it when i got down to mm -hmm. i felt the arresting officer was trying to push me to do it mm -hmm. i personally didn't feel that any number that was going to spit out of that machine was going to be in my favor so i refused it stayed overnight did my classes with my license and been clean since. So. Is there anything about your experience that would preclude you or impact you in a way that you would not be able to listen to the, as the testimony today? No. And, and be fair and impartial to this? No, I can be fair. I made a mistake and it was on me, so. Did, uh, how long ago did you say this was? Ten years. Ten years ago, okay. And did you, uh, did this go to trial or did you no. do some kind of plea deal? No, I was plead out. Okay. I had to play my license for 30 days and I had to go to the fine class. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
anybody else who had a response to that question? Uh, we get on it with the gentleman in the back there. I want to talk about sort of the flip side of things. Has anybody here, whether it be you, whether it be a random family member, been a victim of a DUI? Okay, I got one hand. So just a moment ago, uh, I think the question by the prosecution was, do you feel that you can be fair and impartial in this case based on the experience that happened 47 years ago when you were 20 years old? No, it's I mean, it, it was a life-changing experience. Tell it us really about that. was because I was a full-time student, um, working part-time. I had just bought a brand new Mustang, yeah. and um, this woman came out of nowhere, and she just knocked the front end off my car. Um, and there was a car in another direction with two park rangers in it, and they watched the whole thing, and they got out, and they were, you know, right in front of everything, and they, they, there was no doubt she was drunk. She was hardly standing up, and, um, like I said, it, it put me in a financial hole because she wouldn't pay. She wasn't arrested. Did she have insurance? No, she had no insurance. Um, and when we sued her, she filed for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So I ended up owing a couple thousand dollars on a car I couldn't use. My insurance refused to pay, which I later found out was pretty, pretty standard for State Farm in the 70s. So, um, I, like I said, I had no car, no way to get to school, no way to get to, get to, uh, to work, and I owed thousands of dollars. So, yeah. It, it was a life-changing experience. I am not, I'm strictly opposed to anybody drunk driving and just want nothing to do with it. And because you are strictly opposed, as you so put it, you feel that you cannot be fair and impartial to Mr. Edwards here today? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I've just, that's, that's my opinion, and like that's, I said, and I appreciate, appreciate your message. Thank you. Um, thank you. You may have a seat. Gentlemen, I need you to stay for a second. You may have a seat back in the Can you Last gentleman that was up here, can you talk? Was he number 24? Uh, 23, I believe. No, no, that's right. He was 24. Let me double check. The man is 24. She was 24. I'm sorry, she is 23. Yes, Trevor Gish is number 24, Your Honor. I didn't think his badge number matched his. Okay. We need to check his, for some reason, it didn't, when I saw it was his badge number, I was like, this is empty. And it's what's on the sheet, but... I mean, 170 I realize, is what we have. 170? 170. Oh, okay. 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 Is it good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, Your Honor, just real quick, since we're here, 
Uh, we would also move to strike Ms. French for cause. I think it's, I don't even need to make an argument on that one. I don't have an objection. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, if you could please approach. How are you doing, Ms. Johnson? Good. Good. Listen, um, you're not in trouble, I promise. We just wanted to ask you some more questions based on the answers that you've just provided. Sure, sure. So, so um, is it uh, of your concern? I'm just trying to fill out your answers because you're saying you have no experience with drunk drivers. You've never been in any type of you know altercation, let alone. Or anything like that. You've seen people intoxicated and what they look like, I imagine, in your life, or not even that. You've never even seen an inebriated individual in your entire life. No. Okay. Um, this is an operating a motor vehicle under the influence allegation in okay. this case against Mr. Edwards, who is okay. our client. Okay. Do you feel that based on your lack of experience and having no knowledge of what an intoxicated person may even look like or act like since you've never seen one before okay. in your life, do you think you can be, uh, if you're seated on this jury, do you feel like you can be fair and impartial to Mr. Edwards? No, I don't because I've never had that experience before, so I don't know how the, the, the how you, of course, can represent or anything like that or anything like that. I just don't feel like I don't have enough knowledge with what you're looking for, you know, drunk drivers or driving on the influence or anything like that. So I don't think I would be fair as far as deciding whether he's guilty or innocent or anything like that. So I just don't feel that I would be... You don't feel like this is the case for you, basically? Correct. Correct. All right, you may have a seat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Mm -hmm. We would move to strike for cause. I, I would object to a for cause strike just because I, I don't think she, she's expressing that she doesn't have knowledge of impairment, but that's things that we presented at the trial. I, I don't I don't know if she's misunderstanding the question, but I don't think she's she's not saying I will weigh the evidence in favor of one side or the other. She's just saying I don't know anything about she just said I can't be fair and impartial. I have some concern. Huh? I mean I can just say it appears to me that she is trying very hard to get excused. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Because um, she immediately started saying, how do you get excused? When? That was the first, when we when first started. started. Oh. How do you get excused? Um, oh. And I noted that at the very beginning. And I just oh. think she's trying very hard to get excused. Now, you can clearly... She doesn't know the trick. They just don't show up. Yeah. Today. And mm -hmm. in saying you've never seen somebody... I I've never seen anybody murdered. At least I can't be on a murder yeah. jury. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Okay. Well, I, I, and I find it hard to believe. I, that. I have seen people who live under rocks who literally have, like, so they're religious. They're surrounded by their family day in and day out, and they never get a chance to go out into the real world. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, now that you mention it, I, I will. Those are her initial comments. When that was her initial statements, I noted those oh, at I the very that. beginning. Today, and in, in this room. She, yes, yes. Mm. When he first started, and I, and when I uh, actually, when I asked the question, is there anybody that's been excused for today? She said, 
how do you get excused? Mm. I asked the question about, is there anyone that can't be here the whole day? Or That's why I missed it. She said, so I, I'm not going to strike her for cause. Understood, I Your Honor. I withdraw my request. All right, thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you guys again for your comments, responses. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, the defense counsel has some questions for you as well. All right, those are fits. Mr. Hitch. May it please the court and opposing counsel. My name is Tyler Hitch. How are you all doing? All right. Uh, this is my client, Jeffrey Edwards. And this is my co-counsel, Mr. Larry Foreman. Um, you heard Mr. Johnson say this is the first time before a jury. This is not my first time. This is my favorite part. I love it because it's the only chance you guys get to talk. The only chance you kind of get to raise your hand and move. Otherwise, you're locked up over there. Um, first thing, a little pop culture in Louisville. How many of you saw that Second Street Bridge on that walk? Hands up. At least give me hands up. You don't always have to say things, but just uh, the semi truck over the edge. How many of you knew anyone involved in it? Like a police officer was there on the scene? How about an EMS worker? How about one of the tow truck drivers kind of pulling the truck back out? Anybody? Okay. How many lived in Louisville the whole life? Oh, okay. How about over 10 years? The majority of their life? All right, all right. For some people. Um, how about, how many of you are familiar with the Preston Highway area, kind of South Louisville? Uh, uh, yeah, how would you describe that kind of road for people who haven't driven on before? Somewhat uh, congested. Congested? Who else has handled yeah. And by the way, there's so many of you. I appreciate you. They're smaller and can say everyone's name. How about you? Have you been on Preston Highway before? Uh, tell me, tell me more about the road. Congested. What else? Uh, yeah, traffic lights. Unsafe. Unsafe. Okay. Good. How many have been in a car accident before? Okay. Let's get you in there. No, oh, no, you again. Sorry. Um, how about? Uh, we tell me about the car accident. How about you behind you? <clears throat> and yeah, in front of those brake kits on top. Brake kits on the front of the back. Okay. Um, who else is there for cross? Yeah. Um, car accident from a team over in Cincinnati after dropping her daughter off at college. Uh, somebody ran a red light. Okay. How about uh, anybody else? Yeah, how about you? Yeah, I was in a car accident probably about six years ago when her. Okay, so feel very familiar with car accidents. How many have been in a bad car accident? Like one where you uh, uh, almost like knocked out, had some kind of concussion or something like that. Yeah, how many times? Well, can you remember? You, you know, tell me as much as you can remember. Um, I was a pedestrian. Wow. Oh. oh my gosh. It's too intense for our case. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, your camera's actually in good shape. That's awesome. How about, how about you, sir? When I had this event eight years ago, someone ran into me in on Bargetown Road, talking on their phone once and didn't bother to stop on the median between the two sets of road. Yeah. So she was back to both turns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how can we get a side hands? Is the car accident worse for you if the airbag deploys or if it doesn't deploy? And it's, it's a little gray area, but. Even with the seatbelts, it's still probably more severe than 
Right, seatbelts are about, okay. Um, can you mention the phone? All right. I know there are officers in here. I hope you can see that. It is a humble moment, but how many of you have kind of checked your phone while you're driving? Okay, you're smiling. I love it. Thank you for being honest. No, it's a little bit embarrassing. It's a little bit bad. Nobody likes it, but how, how many can kind of, what if we did with somebody, we close your eyes and only I can see. How many of you have uh, either kind of talked on the phone or texted on the phone while you were driving? Okay, so you're, you're awesome in every regard. Let me see hands up for other people. And I know it's something that it, we have a lot of things in our, in our life that we know we're not supposed to do and we don't want to do and we kind of do it a little bit. Um, How many would say you live in a driving culture where people are distracted while driving? Okay. Do you feel, does anybody here feel like that's a big enough offense that if you're driving while distracted, does anyone feel that you couldn't be fair to someone? Like, no, that, not, not like I'm morally against it, but some people are really intense about certain subjects. Is there anybody who's really, is really upset about people who are distracted while they're driving to such an extent that they couldn't be fair to that person. And I, fig I sort of figured that we're all a little bit guilty in it, but I just wanted to check because I do have a friend who whenever I feel like, hey, you know, like they're real on top of it. And I feel like if it was a case where someone was distracted on their phone, that person couldn't be fair. So I was just surveying to see. Um, okay, well now we get to the big question. What's, what's my job here today? I'm a defense counsel, defense attorney, who can articulate what my job is. Woo, good answer. Defend for trial. Who else has an opinion? Who else can kind of fill that out? Those are both very good answers. How about you? You were good on the evidence one, that previous question? How about you? What do you think the defense attorney's job is? Well, I think that the job is probably not actually for a fair trial, but to make sure that the prosecution doesn't step over any line, <laughs> um, and to defend the rights of your your client. Good. My gosh, two good answers. Come on, someone give me a bad answer. Come on, someone, please. <laughs> Somebody, anybody. Uh, what I pick? Who can I pick on? I don't pick on you. How about you, sir? What do you? What would the what, 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 what would the wrong answer be? What do I not? What do I not have to do? Present evidence. I just do anything. I just sit real pretty. I just like relax, hang out, and they just don't present enough evidence to meet the beyond. A reasonable doubt standard. I was like, guys, they don't have the evidence. Sit back down. Do I? Do we have to prove that Mr. Edwards is innocent? Wait, come on. Right now, at this very moment, is Mr. Edwards innocent? Yes. One hundred percent. Thank you. It's kind of lost you a little bit, but sincerely, it's not our job to prove anything. It's our job to simply bring out the truth, keep it fair. Oh, you have that? Oh, you don't have that. We still don't have that, guys. Like, and it's your job to weigh the evidence and find out whether it meets the standard. We had a lot of you served on juries. Hold on. I took some notes. It's hard to take notes. How about the trials? Who was in civil trial? I remember you. Uh, what is, do we have a standard of care? Like, what standard is a civil trial? It's a, it's a really hard question. It's almost a lawyer question, actually. It's not the, not the beyond a reasonable doubt. It's preponderance. Let's say beyond a reasonable doubt is like here, the highest law of the land. Judge, There's another judge, intermediate. Judge, let me approach. Mm -hmm. object to him defining or putting a scale. I don't know what the demonstration he's about to do, but I would object to him 
try and define what level we've moved out is. Yeah. I understand it's above preponderance. You, you can't really... No, you yeah, won't define it. Is it okay just to say they're different standards, or the one's a higher standard? You can, you can say they're different, but you have to be really careful about trying to... Not define it, just as long as you yeah. don't define it. No, don't like, I would object to a demonstration saying reasonable doubt is here. I mean, that spatial demonstration is still, in a sense, defining mm -hmm. the level of what it is. I think I'm fine with him saying it's a higher standard, but that would be... And just okay. talk about the lower Just talk standards. about it. Just talk about there are lower standards. Okay. It, it's higher, but I, I don't think just you can careful. do a demonstration right thank here. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So... Is the criminal standard a higher standard or a lower standard than the civil prosecution? Either. How about when they can take away your kids? Like, they can come in and, like, take your kids or take your grandma and say, oh, you can't make decisions. Like, a guardianship case. Do you think that? Do you think that's higher than a criminal case? No. Oh. This case. This criminal court is the highest level. When they come and take the kids away, that's a lower standard than a criminal case. The highest standard we have. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. What I we were kind of talking a little bit about what type of evidence you expect to see in a DUI case. I heard some. What is the point of weight mean? Legal limit. Good. Where do you get that from? Where do you get that scientific number from? Breathalyzer. Is that the only way? Blood test. What's it? What's the? What? What's kind of difference? Why not? I guess you can understand the difference between a blood test and a breathalyzer test. Show of hands. Which do you feel is a more reliable test? If you think a blood test is more reliable than a breath test, raise your hand. Or if you think they're the same, raise your hand. Okay? And if you think a breathalyzer is more reliable than a breath test. Okay? Uh, put it in, maybe I can go to you. What if you're about to take a breath test and you throw up into your mouth? Do you think that could affect the breath test? What about uh, if you have acid reflux? Do you think that could affect your breath test? I'm going for the people who did the breath test. Maybe, maybe like a gastrointestinal. You're right. It might require some scientific proving. What about if you wipe the breath nozzle with an alcohol swab? Not sure? Yeah. Missing mouths? Yeah. What about uh, what if you have diabetes or gastro? They call it GERD, gastroesophageal re reflux disease. How do you think that would affect the test? Um, might, make it might make it higher. Right. But do you think these digestive conditions or these? What about like mouthwash? Forgive me. We've seen the YouTube videos where they have sushi. And, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Do you think, uh, Mr. Performance guy, expert Ray, you know, you can or something. But do you think uh, these aspects would affect a blood test? No. It's because she's a nurse, that's why I pointed her out. Oh, cool, they did the research. See, I kind of fly the land a little bit. That's why I was performing. Yeah. Is there not a delay with the blood test? There is a delay, you're right. Usually a couple months to kind of process it at the lab. I meant from yeah, you get the breathless number sooner. You're right. Um, so we write some expediency, maybe maybe in that regard. Okay. How about one one big thing? What if it's a DUI? You can't smell any alcohol. And so you're like, oh, something else. Would would a breath test show the results? Like, if you had cocaine in your system, would a breath test show the result? 
What if you misuse prescription drugs? Would a breath test show the result? Would it show the presence of any other drug? And then how about when it comes to how our bodies metabolize alcohol? Hi, Hans. You sound big man. You could stand there. How much do you weigh? You don't have to say it out loud. Um, so how about this? Let, let's say me or this young lady here. If we both had two beers, common sense would say it would impact who more? <coughs> Perfect. What if I had two beers and had... 50 pounds of food versus two beers and nothing. Would it have a different impact? Okay. These are all, these are all things that are going to be discussed here, so it's kind of a good sense to kind of uh, see if everyone's kind of following these, these subjects a little bit. Um, why do you feel that video evidence is important in the case? Who can kind of volunteer something for that? Yeah. Can't deny video evidence. Can't deny video evidence. Great. Who else? Yeah? Right. Lead room for, I mean, maybe some, like, why were you upset? I can tell you upset. Like, oh, why? Okay. Yeah, who else? Anybody see any of those hot mic things? Like hot mic, like, there's a big deal. You know, like that type of thing, or like, like where somebody's caught kind of saying something on the mic that might, they didn't quite know was being recorded. Yeah. How many of you think that the police are here to serve and to, I don't know. I think the right way to say, you guys have talked about a lot of these subjects already. Uh, what are some of the, the good things that police officers do other than arresting people? Yeah. Right, they put their life in the line, just even to check in on something. What else? What are some, I mean, how about the cat from the tree comment? Kind of going there. What are some positive to serve and protect? What's the serving part? Well, Miss Jacks, what else? How about you? Controls and deterrence and criminal. Controls and deterrence, and what if a, a lady falls down on the ground and she's bleeding? What would a police officer do? Open the first responders are able to render aid. Well, first responder, right? So you would argue a police officer has a duty to be the first responder if someone's injured. And if they can't handle it or they're busy with someone else, who do they have a duty to call? Yes, so I have to also come at the same time. There are almost two parts in the same talk. How do you think police officers should make fun of the people they arrest? Now, how about, how about kind of mock them? Do you think they, do you think they have a duty to Professional and cordial? Anybody have any experience with uh, rheumatoid arthritis? Anybody have a family member? Yeah, tell me, tell me about it. Or can you can you even educate everyone a little bit about what, what it is and what it's about? Uh, pain every day. <laughs> is it personally or a family member? Both. Both. Friend, yeah. Okay. And I broke my every day, um, so that's in your hand. How about anybody else? Anybody know kind of scientifically what rheumatoid arthritis is? Or maybe, yeah? yeah. yeah it's an inflammation of the joints that eats away the, the buffers, the cartilage between the bones. So you're grinding bone bones. Grinding bone and bone into the cartilage. Right. It's an, an uh, immune, an inflammatory response. It starts attacking the cartilage. And I think I've asked this already, but how many have had a major concussion before? Or, you know, not even concussion. I used to run cross country after a race. I was not 
and how you pass out to people or think to or have an impression. Okay, tell me, sir. Uh, tell me about your experience if it's not too personal. No, just why it's Sunday. <laughs> Passed out, threw up, came to. And you drinking? Nope. Okay. Oh, who else? Yeah, uh, no, you went in here for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a heat stroke. Heat stroke. Still trying to get you water, something like that. Oh, my greens. Yeah, when they come on, so it's nice and good. Oh, yeah. Oh, my greens. Oh, no, losing your eyesight. Coming to heat stroke. Uh, who else? Uh, yeah, you too. Yeah, but it's also uh, service related. Yeah, service related. Military. Military. Tell me, tell me about it. Or tell me one memorable experience. Explosion. Explosion. Not being unconscious. Well, we both can tell you it was for me, it was for not getting supplies. Light sensitive. I'm going to use, uh, I think that's, that's kind of my, uh, I'm being gentle with it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be for the And you didn't get any sensitive to that. Okay. Uh, heat sensitive and light sensitive. How about you, sir? Oh, football. Okay, here we go. This is a big one. Yeah, athletics, football. Actually, uh, in the head, knocked out. Good. Blocked out. Good. Knocked out. So unconscious for a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, anybody? Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Oh, we got all the food. We got more detail. Another detail. Yeah, no, okay, that's fine. Just because we have a nurse. And what do the what do a concussion, what symptoms of a concussion are similar to a symptom of intoxication? Dizziness. Dizziness. And I think let's kind of think about it. Football, forgive me, I was gonna be mad. You know, like like virus, uh, service member. Uh, let's think of all these things we're going through. Dizziness. Vomiting, blurred vision, headache, yeah, dizziness, yeah, blurred vision, headache, vomiting. Okay, very good. And just a follow up. Uh, so remember at the time, did anybody drink me? At the time of this. Right. I remember finishing cross country and like falling over myself. I think, actually, that's that's the end of it. That's the end of us for today. I think we're going to narrow down the jury, and I'm really grateful for y'all being here, and see you soon. Ready for trial. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anything else? Okay, at this point, um, I am going to um, excuse the panel uh, for just a few moments, probably about 20, about 20 minutes. Um, you'll be able to, if you would like to go up and get a drink, as long as it has a lid, um, you can bring those into the courtroom. Um, so that would be fine. Uh, but you'll need to line up right back outside the courtroom at about five minutes till and then we'll bring you back in. This will be why the attorneys make their selection. Please note that at this point in time, no evidence has been presented to you. You are not to form any opinions about this case because you, know, you don't know anything about it at this point other than what the charge is. So if anyone tries to approach you, um, 
about this case, you must report that to the deputies. Um, and if you see these gentlemen out in the hallway and they don't speak to you, or uh, please note that they're not permitted to. So it's not that they're being rude or if they're avoiding you, um, but they are not permitted to do that. So they are not allowed to have contact with you outside the courtroom. So uh, at this time, you will be excused. Folks, just remember where you're sitting, because when you come back in, you'll sit in the same exact spot. All rise for the jury. Jury, vending machines on the first floor, and the snack bar on the second floor. Which room can we use, Your Honor? Um, that's a really good question. I'll take you back in the back. Can we explain one? Samina? rooms out here because these have all been turned into offices okay um, would you allow them if they can't get into a conference room out here would you let them into 103 yeah these yeah, guys yeah. thank you you guys can stay here or go whichever room you choose okay. oh, and right. i can pause the record so it's not recording you. yes we're going to discuss were there any more motions for cause uh, just those two that we have. Yes. Yeah, I think we've already had rulings on those. Yes, we yeah. already ruled on them. Okay. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have any additional ones. Right now. Okay. All right. And you've given her your strikes. Yes, Your Honor. And then the seven will be chosen at random. Yeah. Yeah. So once she's pulled. She'll give us the list. We'll draw down to seven. I'm just waiting for co counsel to come back from the, yeah. uh, into the courtroom. Okay. You say we're going down. Uh -huh. We're going to count off strikes. Yes. Thank you. We're going to draw names until all the seven are left. Those are the seven. So we have everybody but the two in the, in the stack now. They'll take out the ones you struck and then. However many are left, they will take out randoms, and then there'll be seven. And this is our second copy, Your Honor. No yeah. margins on it. Thank you. Perfect. If you want to, yeah, uh, also, yeah, I will take back the extra copy. We keep these. I mean, you can keep them for, if you want to keep the information. For the purposes of the, for the duration of the jury trial? If you want to, once you see who's picked, if you want to look at this, but you, you have to give this back to me at the end, basically. Oh, of course. You can keep okay. it to the Thank trial, you. yeah. That's fine. Thank you. At the end, all the jury and stuff. Of course, yes. Paperwork has to be we given back. Keep these. Oh, right. I, I did could, that once. You could get a that. copy back if you like. Yeah. 
Is, is there, is that all that's left? It, this is all that's left. How many are there? It would make our lives a whole lot easier when we have our final six. Seven. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When we there have are our final fourteen six. here, so there have to be seven drawn, seven randoms. Okay. So I'm going to just scramble this stack. And so what I'll normally do is just scramble the stack and then just take the top seven off the pile. Or unless anybody wants to do it differently. I'm okay with that, Your Honor. So here are the seven, and here are the altars, here are the... Now, all of you do not forget to have me excuse the alternate before the end. <laughs> I have actually, one time, they all deliberated, all seven. They obviously, they, they obviously were unanimous with stuff. Okay, so we have the seven, and the seven are... Number 12, Lydia Dixon. Lydia Dixon. Uh, number 6, Frank Kyle. What? Well, that can't be right. Yeah. What he was for co cause. Well, well no, no, he wasn't. He wasn't for cause, actually. He wasn't for cause. Well, 16 and 23 were the only ones for cause. The two cause were 23 and 16. Yeah, 23 and 16. Is this the man who was bitter to the day? That was number six. I thought he was struck hard. Yeah. Number 16 is what I have. 16 and 23 were struck hard. 16 and 23. Was he the bitter guy who was pulled over? He was number six. I six. That was number six. That's number six. I thought you were like struck. That, that, that is was, the guy who said that. And we did, that wasn't a strike for calls already? He no. was not. The motion wasn't. Uh, Made at the time. Well, I misunderstood that. Yeah. Are you are you wanting to make the motion? Yes. Uh, yeah, I would make the motion to strike him for cause. And your honor, I I do apologize to the prosecution, but I believe that ship has already sailed. Um, the motions for cause. I asked if there were any more motions, and so the two. And both of us said no. We and don't have any. Both of our they can't unring the bell, your honor. In what? Sorry. It was our understanding that that gentleman had already been struck for cause when he approached. Sometimes people make mistakes. And I would, I would say the jury has not been seated yet. I don't think the time has passed. They're not even yeah. back in the courtroom. So I do think it's within the court's authority to entertain the motion. And we would strongly object because I don't, I believe he said he can be fair and impartial. Sure, he had a, a bitter experience. I think we can all speak to a bitter experience with the court at some point. But he never indicated, nor was the question. The question, I believe, was asked. Uh, can he still be fair and impartial? And he said, I think I can. If it wasn't asked, I may be misremembering, but that's not the duty of the defense, first of all, because uh, it, it appears the prosecution, we have no problem with him sitting on the jury. Uh, and if the prosecution misunderstood which jurors were already excused for cause, again, I, I, I will defer to the court. Well, I would object that too, but I don't think the, the jury's been sitting yet, but I still don't get if, if that is the case, so I think we have extra privilege. Do not yeah, we only I don't use. think the jury's been sitting. I think we should be allowed to use our peremptory then. Do you have an extra preemptory that yes. you did not use? Yes. Yeah, we, we only used you only four. Used four? On yes. the paper. You only used four? All right. I am going to let them use it. Okay. That, thank you, Your Honor. Because so, of the misunderstanding. So, so we would need one more from that one more pile. Drawn. And I'm going to mark that he was struck for cause, um, or peremptory, I guess.
So that's the Commonwealth strike judge. Yes. Number six. Preemptory. Yeah. Yes. No problem. Okay, so he's pulled out. Okay, so the next we have Stuart Houchin, number two. <coughs> number 13, Robert Berry. Number 10, Ashley Ritchie. In Trevor Gish, 24. And John Shell, 15. So that's one, two, three, that should be six. That's six. Yep, and then the random. James Ford, 17. So they are 2, 10, 12, 13, 15, 17, 24. Okay. 2, 10, 12, 13, 15, 17, and 24. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. We have no objection to that jury. Now. You all good? So what will happen is we will bring them in. I will call out their names, not have them come up until I've excused everyone else, then have them come forward, and then you all can turn your tables around while that's happening. If I may have a five-minute recess, Your Honor, okay. just a restroom break. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't see you there. 